Hey guys. All right. Well, now I basically got a new program. I got everything working on my phone. And it looks like we're going to actually have a stream video. But we're going to do that a little bit later. I just want to show you guys a very funny replay. I've been actually dying to show a lot of people for a long time. It is what happens when you have a Psy frame mirror match. We all understand how annoying Psy frame can be. Now imagine both players were using Psy frames against one another. It does sound pretty annoying, right? Well, I had the displeasure of playing the mirror match. And to be honest, it was not fun. I really don't want to ever do that again. So, you know, enough small talk. Let's try and get into it. Now, this is the video. I'm going to go play it right now. Let me get swap. All right. I'm the one in front. Now, this is a very long game. So, he starts off with his card, card D. I negate it. Because I knew he was playing side frame, so that gave away I'm playing side frame. I know it was a little premature, but I really didn't want him to gain any more advantage than he already had. Because he already had the field. So now he had another one. Great. And I didn't open up with Delta. So these are my hand cards. I was playing a slightly different side frame deck where I was going through my deck and doing a lot of draw power. Because my deck is really based on countering. Well... So yeah, it's probably not the smartest way to play Cyframes, but this is when I first got Cyframes when High Speed Riders came out. And I played it for like maybe about two or three weeks, I, and then I got really sick of it because I got, I got really tired of countering and waiting for my opponent to do something. Like as you can see, we're just both past it at this point. This time he got his card card D off. I didn't want to gate because I figured he probably had Gamma in his hand by now. See, since he does have a Gamma, but I didn't know at the time. So, who knows what he, he said. I'm assuming he sent overload at this time, but they were apparently just two second field zones. But again, he's drawn with, with card card D. He's getting more cards than I am. He's at a better overall advantage. And look, he even plays traps. He already got his two psychic field zones out. I haven't even drawn my field spell yet. So, I'm not in a very good advantage. I have the Curry Bandit in my hand. I just didn't want to summon it because who look at everything he's had. There's nothing I could do. I'm just really trying to draw and see if I could draw into anything useful or, you know, hopefully he decks out before I do. I finally draw this field spell. I didn't play it. And I said it. Now he activated overload. So I'm like, okay, now he does have overload. Now he's just trying to banish my resources. I chain my card, hoping to draw. And I put three back, so I'm drawing. I drew my own field zone, which is awesome. Now I can actually start using it. But I didn't play here, and I let those go because I know he has overload, so he's probably just going to try and start banishing my stuff. I'm active in Bright Future, so I could return two of my banished cards to the graveyard. Now I could draw a card. Technically, my field zone is somewhat dead now. Again, I didn't want to summon the card card D because I'm assuming he's going to negate it, or he has alpha in his hand, or he was just going to banish it. There were so many things he could have done. I'm just trying to hope up my resources. He's chaining, and I'm chaining, and I'm chained to that to get rid of his field zone, but now he negates it. Now my trap is going through because he summoned way too many monsters on board. So his last summon could not resolve, which means now my trap will, will resolve, and I get to draw two cards. His delta is going to stay in his hand, though. Now he's getting two summons, and it's looking really bad for me. And don't mind the name. Anyway, yeah, it's looking really bad for me. I'm activating my own alpha. At least trying to get some cards back into my hand. He took two cards out of my hand, but it doesn't matter to me. I at least got rid of one of his Omega, but he's activating Torrential. That really turned me back. I was hoping to try and do something, but that Torrential really set me back a lot. Now I'm activating my own Field Spell. I'm activating this time. He's activating Overload. And this is where he gets really petty. He empties his whole hand just to make sure I don't get a Field Zone. Now I'm drawing two cards. That's, I believe, the first card card D I played this entire game. Now he does have Omega, he's about to attack, I'm going to destroy it because he can't activate during the battlefield. But he ended up banishing it to banish my set card. If you're wondering what that was, it was my own field zone, but it was kind of dead at that point. Now the duel is getting kind of long, now we're getting active instead of that. I don't even know how many turns of that was passing, like what, somewhere around 10 turns? I'm drawing two cards, he's negating because he really just wants to get a uh, sinker out. At this point, I really don't care if he has Omega out. And now he's going to try and return cards to his graveyard, but I don't know why he didn't do that. He took a card out of my hand, hoping to attack me with his Yasenju 
It was just Senji Kama 2, I believe that's is I think it was. So yeah, it's Kama 2. I banished his Kama 2. I drew a final countdown. I didn't activate because life points was vital now and I didn't know how long I could stall long enough for it to go through. Plus I knew since he still had overload, I gotta try and see if I could bait out his overload. Now he's dependent on that Omega to win. He knows I still have a beta in my hand. Now I have my own curry bandit. Now I finally get damage on him. As minimal as it was, but heck, it's side frames. You'll be lucky to get damage. He's attacking my curry bandit. Now he's trying to negate. I'm negating it. He's banishing it to destroy my set card. He didn't know it was a final countdown. I don't think he still knows his final countdown. But since I'm losing my driver anyway, might as well take out his field zone. I think he's out of field zones now. Now I'm, I play wave motion cannon. He's looking to try to win wave motion cannon. Again, he summons another comma 2. I am not letting that comma 2 do any damage to me. I decided to just bash it. Now I'm technically ahead on resources because he has no hand. He has no more monsters. And he drew more overloads. Now I'm trying to just recycle all my cards back into my deck so I'm not losing advantage. Now here's where I'm going to attack with Curry Bandit again. I'm not activating the effect as he knows because I don't need any more cards and I'm just trying to do as much as possible. Now he activates Psychic Path. We turn Gamma and Beta which are pretty good. Again he's getting rid of my Wave Motion Cannon. But I decided to get rid of his but again he changed his overload to mines and got rid of my cannon eventually. I don't know why he didn't destroy my overload with his overload, I mean banish, but I don't know, maybe he wanted me to continue to waste my resources later, but he, eventually he's going to have to get rid of my curry bandit. So yeah, now I'm hoping to get more attacks on curry bandit. I activate my own field spell, he is again chain overload, I thought he was going to banish it like he did again, but he did not. Because I'm out of field spells if this one's gone, now he has two alphas. And two overloads. I only have one overload. So I'm hoping to attack again. This time he's just banishing my curry bandit. I'm banishing his overload. And again he's targeting the same card that was already targeted. I don't understand why he didn't target my overload. Now I have my own monster. And I was happy. I thought I was going to take a card. After, but he top deck Regeki. I'm like oh well. I'm at least going to take out his last overload. I couldn't believe he top deck Regeki on me. Now, this is where it gets funny. I'm attacking him with card, card D now. I know this has been a long game and hope I wasn't bothering you guys talking throughout this entire game. He sets the pot of duality. He actually said pot of duality right after I banished it. I'm guessing he was just trying to, you know, mess with me or something. But it doesn't matter. I wasn't taking any chances. I don't know. Apparently, it looks like he did have another field spell. Anyway, now I'm just attacking with card, card D. He's at 800 now, and look what he tossed back here. His own car car D, and he's hoping to do a car crash, and I'm just like, nope. No car crashes, just hit and run. And here we are, the final attack of the game. Car car D for game for exactly 800. Now, that was long, and that involves so much outplaying one, one another. I really hope none of you guys have to go through a 54 turn, especially a side frame mirror. This is why I gave up playing side frames, but this was definitely a funny replay. I definitely wanted to just show you guys how it was and see if you guys enjoyed it. I really hope you do. Now since I got this working, I'm going to do this as a test video. I'm going to upload it and hope you guys like it. This is not the standard way you guys see replays from, you know, YGO Pro, but I'm doing this from my mobile phone and I thought... It's kind of cool. I got it done. So, yeah. Hope you guys enjoy. I'll see you guys.